Hello and welcome. I'm Michael Pearson. This is The Human Condition. Today we're recording Chapter 6 for the EEG and ERP for Complementary Alternative and Functional Medicine Practitioners and their patients and the technicians that, that perform these procedures. The next section, Chapter 6, is about ratios and peak alpha frequencies. Some systems report in a way that they're a screening tool and they help um, encapsulate data for, for screening brain conditions and helping people look at easy numbers. There are a lot of little metrics that can help us see how a brain is doing. And the first of them is the theta to beta ratio. So the theta waves are fairly slow waves and beta waves are fairly fast waves. And so if you think of what we have kind of a nickname for people that have a lot of theta waves or very high amplitude theta waves, we call them a theta brain. And they're kind of a slowish, um, uh, not obtunded, but kind of, kind of sluggish. And, and a lot of people complain that they're not present or they're not engaged or they're not there. You have to kind of really shake them to get them to wake up and, and, uh, and join, the, join the class or join the, join the conversation. And um, sometimes they, they look a little bit like they may be stoned or they've been pot smoking or something, and um, somehow they're not always with it. Now, on the other hand, the beta brain is the, is the brain that might be just too fast and, and not able to relax and is just always driving. That might be, you know, the alpha personality type, the, the person who is just driving and, and never slows down and really can't turn their brain off and is always thinking and maybe a little obsessive compulsive. So the theta to beta ratio can be re reported and given as a, a guideline that'll help people understand if it's, um, you know, normative, we're in good shape. If it's a little too low, then we have very low theta to, to beta. Or on the other hand, if it's high, we have high theta and low beta. So that gives us an idea if a person's too little theta to too much beta or too high theta to too little beta. And that's um, an inc inc inclination or, or an indication of the speed of their brain and, and how much they're generally firing. You know, when they're at rest, there should be a certain amount of brain waves. And when they're doing a task, there should be a certain different amount of brain waves. When their eyes are closed versus open, there's a difference in alpha waves and, and beta waves. So uh, all of that is, is what, we, what we look at. The next is the F3 to F4 alpha ratio. And so that one's a little bit complex because it measures kind of a couple of things. First of all, all the odd numbers on the EEG are on the left side of the head, and all the even numbers are on the right side of the head. So F is frontal, so F3 and F4 are right about here. And so F3 to F4 is basically left frontal. Uh, left prefrontal to right prefrontal, and it's a very good measurement for things like depression. So generally, the left hemisphere fires to make us alert and aware and, and happy, and, and it's the approach hemisphere, the approach frontal lobe, and the right hemisphere is the avoidance hem hemisphere, or the one that says, hey, wait a minute, I'm, I'm not sure about that. The right hemisphere is generally a little more nonlinear, a little more creative, a little bit more... Um, open to new experiences, and, and the left brain is, is, is um, a little more regimented and linear. So the difficulty with this ratio is that it measures alpha waves, and alpha waves are a lower frequent, middle to lower frequency brain wave that um, is kind of an idling brain wave. It's not the most powerful brain wave. So typically, if your left frontal lobe was strong, generally, not just alpha waves, but strong generally, you wouldn't have a lot of depression you would have a very strong state of mind where you don't have much depression. And if your right frontal lobe was firing very well, you wouldn't have much anxiety. But if you have a strong left frontal lobe with all of its output, you, you can get a, a state of anxiety without depression. On the other hand, your left frontal lobe is not firing very well, then you've got this strong right, weak left, you've got this depression. So generally, the activity level of the left side makes you avoid depression, the activity of the right side makes you avoid anxiety. So if you have both working well, you're fine. And of course, there are other disorders where, the, where it cycles on and off, like bipolar, and those are different stories. But very generally, for basic depression and basic anxiety, the research shows that this is usually pretty accurate. Now, the problem is the alpha ratio kind of flips this on its head. The alpha ratio is the measure of how slow the brain is. So a high F3 alpha means the brain is suppressed because alpha is a suppressive wave. So high F3 alpha and a low F4 alpha means that generally the output of the left frontal lobe is gonna be stronger. So in that case, we might get a depression. So it's a little bit counterintuitive. So 
When you see F3, F4 alpha ratio, remember it's flipped on its head. It's not, it's not all function of the left hemisphere, it's the alpha function of the left hemisphere, and alpha is like the brakes. So think of alpha as the brakes for the brain. So generally, if, you see, if you're trying to measure activity and function and depression and anxiety, think of alpha as, as turning off the brain or the brakes. So F3 alpha, high F3 alpha means lots of brakes on the left frontal lobe, and less F4 alpha means not as much brakes on the right frontal lobe. On the other hand, if there was very little F3 alpha, that means there's no brakes on the, on the left F3. And in the right side, if there was lots of brakes, high, high F, F4 alpha, that would mean that we have lots of inhibition and, and not a very strong um, uh, left frontal lobe. And so that would give us more of that anxiety condition. So the idea is you have to understand that F3, F4 alpha is the opposite of what you intuitively think of when you think of a strong left frontal lobe or a strong right frontal lobe. Further, alpha waves are, they have this thing called an alpha peak frequency. And so an alpha peak frequency is um, generally between eight and 12 cycles per second or eight, and eight to 12 hertz. And it's a, it's a peak that occurs um, mostly in the back of the brain, especially with the eyes closed. And that's a sign of a normal healthy brain. So we wanna look at a healthy alpha peak frequency and see where is the peak and is it a rather relatively sharp peak, a very narrow peak. We don't want a big wide alpha peak where we have a lot of, of low alpha lingering in the, in the lower end. And we also don't want a, a double peak or, or a second peak later on where there is um, further up the spectrum in the, in the higher range, like in the beta range. We don't want that to happen because that shows us that the brain isn't very efficient. We want a nice, happy, resting brain that has one peak that's relatively narrow alpha peak, and it shows up on the chart as a simple peak without a lot of extra uh, edge. And so either side of edge or, or extra, extra waves, extra peaks, is, is not a good idea. Um, we don't want to see that extra peak. So alpha peak frequency is a measure of the brain's flexibility. It's a measure of the ability for a person to be flexible and, and learn new things. And it's one of the most studied parts of the human brain. Um, the alpha peak frequency also gives us hints as to ischemia or constricted blood vessels. Um, the, the low end of alpha, if there's a kind of extra, extra lower alpha hanging around below the peak in that curve, instead of a nice sharp alpha curve, if there's a, a bunch of extra area below the curve in the uh, left side of, of your graph toward the low side, that lower alpha frequencies lends itself to, um, to ischemia, and, and it can indicate regional focal or general ischemia depending on where it is in the brain. So it's useful to look at with individuals and very carefully construct that, that spectral analysis that is the graph that shows this alpha peak frequency. That is the end of chapter six, ratios and peak alpha frequencies.